Okay, this one goes out by request. Radical function, finding the domain and range. So, you know, option one is you could always store this function into your calculator and take a look at it. And you have to be pretty comfortable with your calculator. Uh, what would happen is if you took a look at it, you'd see something that looks like this. And you would have to spot uh, that the x-intercept is at two-thirds comma zero but you'd have to be pretty comfortable with your calculator and then you could just sort of visually say gee I can see the domain you know is two-thirds to infinity remember low comma high your lowest x value is two-thirds and then it shoots off to infinity and range would be zero to infinity now that is the uh, sort of graphical visual way of doing it if you're going to find the domain of the radical function just analytically you have to look at whatever's under the radical so um, you just set the radicand if you're looking for a recipe um, set the radicand greater than or equal to zero okay so if we do that 3x minus 2 greater than or equal to zero and just solve go ahead and solve for x so we're going to have 3x is greater than or equal to 2, therefore, and then divide both sides by 3. So therefore, x is greater than or equal to 2 thirds. Well, gee, x is greater than or equal to 2 thirds. That's the same as 2 thirds to infinity. So um, no matter what, you're going to get 2 thirds to infinity for your domain. Um, I believe the one on the final focuses solely on finding the domain of the radical function, not its range. So just focus on finding the domain. So remember, you can do that visually or you can do that analytically by, by setting the radicand greater than or equal to zero. Okay, let's see what's on the next slide. The domain of range, uh, excuse me, just the domain actually, just the domain um, of a rational function. So it's, it's this simple. Uh, the recipe is set the denominator equal to zero and see what x is not allowed to be. See what x is not allowed to equal. All right, well, let's think about that. If we set the denominator equal to zero and try to solve that, we're going to factor that, right? So uh, that's going to factor into x minus 8 and x plus 7. So there would be two restrictions. So, I mean, if you solve that, clearly x equals 8 and x equals negative 7. So those are actually restrictions from the domain. So the domain of a rational function, is, in words, is basically all reals except x is not allowed to equal something. Well, whatever would cause the denominator to be zero. Well, we just found that. You know, if you put eight, store eight in the denominator, you're going to get out of zero. If you store negative seven in the denominator, you're going to get out zero. So, in words, all reals except x is not allowed to be eight and x is not allowed to be negative seven. And that's it. You, um, you know, more formally, you might see that like curly brace x such that x is not allowed to equal. 8 or negative 7, just like with roster method. But I'm fine if you just write it in words and, and uh, you know, if it's multiple choice, you'll be able to see that pretty quickly. All right, and last but not least, rationalize the denominator. You have a binomial in the denominator here. So when you have a binomial, note to self, use the conjugate. So we got whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So we're going to multiply by 2 minus root 7 on bottom, 2 minus root 7 on top. Rationalize the denominator is a fancy way of saying get this radical out of the denominator in a legal way. So make the radical vanish in a legal way. And the only way to do that is with using the conjugate and uh, some foil here. So 2 times 2 makes 4. 2 times root 7 and then minus, so makes minus 2 root 7. Inner, so you're just foiling. Inner makes plus 2 root 7. And last, well, root 7 times root 7 makes root 49, so we're minus root 49. Now you're right by thinking that... And, um, let me scoot that on down if it'll let me. 
And you're also right by thinking that the root of 49 is 7. So after all that sweat equity, you know, 4 minus, you can clean this up here, so 4 minus 7 makes negative 3. So in the denominator, you'd have negative 3. And then in the numerator, well, you're just going to foil that out as well. So, you know, 3 times 2 makes 6. Um, then you'll have minus 3 root 7. And then you'll have plus 2 root 6. Kind of running out of room here. And then root 6 times root 7 is root 42. So, and I think I'll, I might do that on another slide just because I'm running out of room there. I'll hit pause. Okay, so here we are. We arrive here. Um, when you, so first, outer, inner, last, when you foil the, the, the numerator out, you get 6 minus 3 root 7 plus 2 root 6 minus root 42. And like I said, I kind of ran out of room there, so I brought it right here. Um, the square root of 42 doesn't break down. There's no perfect squares that divide into 42. Um, 3 root 7 and 2 root 6, that doesn't break down either. Um, so, voila, you're cooked. That's it. And the, the goal is achieved, which is to get the radical out of the denominator, which we did. We just have an integer in the denominator. So this would be your final answer right here. Um, so just spot, you know, when you have a binomial, two terms connected by the operation of addition, one of them's a radical. When you have a binomial um, with a radical, such as that, uh, you use a conjugate to help get rid of that radical in the denominator. All right, hope that helps. Good luck.